The de Broglie-Bohm theory, also known as the pilot wave theory, Bohmian mechanics, the Bohm or Bohm's interpretation, and the causal interpretation, is an interpretation of quantum theory. In addition to a wave function on the space of all possible configurations, it also postulates an actual configuration that exists even when unobserved. The evolution over time of the configuration is defined by the wave function via a guiding equation. The evolution of the wave function over time is given by Schrödinger's equation. The theory is named after Louis de Broglie and David Bohm. The theory is deterministic and explicitly non-local. The velocity of any one particle depends on the value of the guiding equation, which depends on the configuration of the system given by its wave function. The latter depends on the boundary conditions of the system, which in principle may be the entire universe. The theory results in a measurement formalism, analogous to thermodynamics for classical mechanics, that yields the standard quantum formalism generally associated with the Copenhagen interpretation. The theory's explicit non-locality resolves the measurement problem, which is conventionally delegated to the topic of interpretations of quantum mechanics in the Copenhagen interpretation. The Born rule in Broglie-Bohm theory is not a basic law. Rather, in this theory the link between the probability density and the wave function has the status of a hypothesis called the quantum equilibrium hypothesis, which is additional to the basic principles governing the wave function. The theory was historically developed by de Broglie in the 1920s, who in 1927 was persuaded to abandon it in favor of the then mainstream Copenhagen interpretation. David Bohm, dissatisfied with the prevailing orthodoxy, rediscovered de Broglie's pilot wave theory in 1952. Bohm's suggestions were not widely received then, partly due to reasons unrelated to their content. Connected to Bohm's youthful communist affiliations, the Broglie-Bohm theory was widely deemed unacceptable by mainstream theorists, mostly because of its explicit non-locality. Bell's theorem was inspired by Bell's discovery of the work of David Bohm and his subsequent wondering if the obvious non-locality of the theory could be eliminated. Since the 1990s, there has been renewed interest in formulating extensions to de Broglie-Bohm theory, attempting to reconcile it with special relativity and quantum field theory, besides other features such as spin or curved spatial geometries. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy article on quantum decoherence groups approaches to quantum mechanics into five groups of which pilot wave theories are one. There are several equivalent mathematical formulations of the theory and it is known by a number of different names. The de Broglie wave has a macroscopic analogy termed Faraday wave. Overview De Broglie-Bohm theory is based on the following postulates. There is a configuration of the universe described by coordinates, which is an element of the configuration space. The configuration space is different for different versions of pilot wave theory. For example, this may be the space of positions of particles, or, in case of field theory, the space of field configurations. The configuration evolves according to the guiding equation, whereas the probability current or probability flux and is the momentum operator. Here is the standard complex valued wave function known from quantum theory which evolves according to Schrödinger's equation. This already completes the specification of the theory for any quantum theory with Hamilton. Operator of type. The configuration is distributed according to its some moment of time, and this consequently holds for all times. Such a state is named quantum equilibrium. With quantum equilibrium, this theory agrees with the results of standard quantum mechanics. Notably, even if this latter relation is frequently presented as an axiom of the theory, in Bohm's original papers of 1952 it was presented as derivable from statistical mechanical arguments. This argument was further supported by the work of Bohm in 1953 and was substantiated by Vigia and Bohm's paper of 1954 in which they introduced 
stochastic fluid fluctuations that drive a process of asymptotic relaxation from quantum non-equilibrium to quantum equilibrium. Double slit experiment The double slit experiment is an illustration of wave-particle duality. In it, a beam of particles travels through a barrier that has two slits. If one puts a detector screen on the side beyond the barrier, the pattern of detected particles shows interference fringes characteristic of waves arriving at the screen from two sources. However, the interference pattern is made up of individual dots corresponding to particles that had arrived on the screen. The system seems to exhibit the behavior of both waves and particles. If we modify this experiment so that one slit is closed, no interference pattern is observed. Thus, the state of both slits affects the final results. We can also arrange to have a minimally invasive detector at one of the slits to detect which slit the particle went through. When we do that, the interference pattern disappears. The Copenhagen interpretation states that the particles are not localized in space until they are detected, so that, if there is not any detector on the slits, there is no information about which slit the particle has passed through. If one slit has a detector on it, then the wave function collapses due to that detection. In de Broglie-Bohm theory, the wave function is defined at both slits. But each particle has a well-defined trajectory that passes through exactly one of the slits. The final position of the particle on the detector screen and the slit through which the particle passes is determined by the initial position of the particle. Such initial position is not knowable or controllable by the experimenter, so there is an appearance of randomness in the pattern of detection. In Bohm's 1952 papers he used the wave function to construct a quantum potential that, when included in Newton's equations, gave the trajectories of the particles streaming through the two slits. In effect the wave function interferes with itself and guides the particles via the quantum potential in such a way that the particles avoid the regions in which the interference is destructive and are attracted to the regions in which the interference is constructive, resulting in the interference pattern on the detector screen. To explain the behavior when the particle is detected to go through one slit, one needs to appreciate the role of the conditional wave function and how it results in the collapse of the wave function, this is explained below. The basic idea is that the environment registering the detection effectively separates the two wave packets in configuration space. The theory the ontology The ontology of de Broglie-Bohm theory consists of a configuration of the universe and a pilot wave. The configuration space can be chosen differently, as in classical mechanics and standard quantum mechanics. Thus, the ontology of pilot wave theory contains as the trajectory we know from classical mechanics, as the wave function of quantum theory. So, at every moment of time there exists not only a wave function, but also a well-defined of configuration of the whole universe. The correspondence to our experiences is made by the identification of the configuration of our brain with some part of the configuration of the whole universe, as in classical mechanics. While the ontology of classical mechanics is part of the ontology of de Broglie-Bohm theory, the dynamics are very different. In classical mechanics, the accelerations of the particles are imparted directly by forces, which exist in physical three-dimensional space. In de Broglie-Bohm theory, the velocities of the particles are given by the wave function, which exists in a 3n-dimensional configuration space where n corresponds to the number of particles in the system. Bohm hypothesized that each particle has a complex and subtle inner structure that provides the capacity to react to the information provided by the wave function via the quantum potential. Also, unlike in classical mechanics, physical properties are spread out over the wave function in de Broglie-Bohm theory not localized at the position of the particle. The wave function itself, and not the particles, determines the dynamical evolution of the system. The particles do not act back onto the wave function. As Bohm and highly warded it, the Schrödinger equation for the quantum field does not have sources. 
nor does it have any other way by which the field could be directly affected by the condition of the particles. The quantum theory can be understood completely in terms of the assumption that the quantum field has no sources or other forms of dependence on the particles. P. Holland considers this lack of reciprocal action of particles and wave function to be one among the many non-classical properties exhibited by this theory. It should be noted however that Holland has later called this a merely apparent lack of back reaction, due to the incompleteness of the description. In what follows below, we will give the setup for one particle moving in followed by the setup for particles moving in three dimensions. In the first instance, configuration space and real space are the same while in the second, real space is still, but configuration space becomes while the particle positions themselves are in real space, the velocity field and wave function are on configuration space, which is how particles are entangled with each other in this theory. Extensions to this theory include spin and more complicated configuration spaces. We use variations of for particle positions while represents the complex valued wave function on configuration space. Guiding equation for a spinless single particle moving in, the particle's velocity is given. For many particles, we label them as for the th particle and the velocities are given by. The main fact to notice is that this velocity field depends on the actual positions of all of the particles in the universe. As explained below, in most experimental situations, the influence of all of those particles can be encapsulated into an effective wave function for a subsystem of the universe. Schrödinger's equation The one particle Schrödinger equation governs the time evolution of a complex valued wave function on. The equation represents a quantized version of the total energy of a classical system evolving under a real valued potential function on. For many particles, the equation is the same except that and are now on configuration space. This is the same wave function of conventional quantum mechanics. Relation to the Born rule in Bohm's original papers Bohm 1952, he discusses how de Broglie-Bohm theory results in the usual measurement results of quantum mechanics. The main idea is that this is true if the positions of the particles satisfy the statistical distribution given by, and that distribution is guaranteed to be true for all time by the guiding equation if the initial distribution of the particles satisfies. For a given experiment, we can postulate this as being true and verify experimentally that it does indeed hold true, as it does. But, as argued in De Real, one needs to argue that this distribution for subsystems is typical. They argue that by virtue of its equivariance under the dynamic evolution of the system, is the appropriate measure of typicality for initial conditions of the positions of the particles. They then prove that the vast majority of possible initial configurations will give rise to statistics obeying the Born rule for measurement outcomes. In summary, in a universe governed by the de Broglie-Bohm dynamics, Born rule behavior is typical. The situation is thus analogous to the situation in classical statistical physics. A low entropy initial condition will, with overwhelmingly high probability, evolve into a higher entropy state. Behavior consistent with the second law of thermodynamics is typical. There are, of course, anomalous initial conditions that would give rise to violations of the second law. However, in the absence of some very detailed evidence supporting the actual realization of one of those special initial conditions, it would be quite unreasonable to expect anything but the actually observed uniform increase of entropy. Similarly, in the de Broglie-Bohm theory, there are anomalous initial conditions that would produce measurement statistics in violation of the Born rule, but the typicality theorem shows that, in the absence of some specific reason to believe that one of those special initial conditions was in fact realized, the Born rule behavior is what one should expect. It is in that qualified sense that the Born rule is, for the de Broglie-Bohm theory, a theorem rather than an additional postulate.
It can also be shown that a distribution of particles that is not distributed according to the Born rule and evolving under the de Broglie-Bohm dynamics is overwhelmingly likely to evolve dynamically into a state distributed as C. For example ref, a video of the electron density in a 2D box evolving under this process is available here. The conditional wave function of a subsystem in the formulation of the de Broglie-Bohm theory there is only a wave function for the entire universe. It should however be noted that the universe is simply the system limited by the same boundary conditions used to solve the Schrödinger equation. However, once the theory is formulated, it is convenient to introduce a notion of wave function also for subsystems of the universe. Let us write the wave function of the universes where denotes the configuration variables associated to some subsystem of the universe and denotes the remaining configuration variables, denote, respectively, by and by the actual configuration of subsystem and of the rest of the universe. For simplicity, we consider here only the spinless case. The conditional wave function of subsystem is defined by, it follows immediately from the fact that satisfies the guiding equation that also the configuration satisfies a guiding equation identical to the one presented in the formulation of the theory, with the universal wave function replaced with the conditional wave function. Also, the fact that is random with probability density given by the square modulus of implies that the conditional probability density of given is given by the square modulus of the conditional wave function. Unlike the universal wave function, the conditional wave function of a subsystem does not always evolve by the Schrödinger equation, but in many situations it does. For instance, if the universal wave function factors as then the conditional wave function of subsystem is equal to if, in addition, the Hamiltonian does not contain an interaction term between subsystems and then does satisfy a Schrödinger equation. More generally, assume that the universal wave function can be written in the form where solve Schrödinger equation and for all in. Then, again, the conditional wave function of subsystem is equal to and if the Hamiltonian does not contain an interaction term between subsystems and satisfies of Schrödinger equation, the fact that the conditional wave function of a subsystem does not always evolve by the Schrödinger equation is related to the fact that the usual collapse rule of standard quantum theory emerges from the Bohmian formalism when one considers conditional wave functions of subsystems.